Hey everybody, I'm Joe Kellinger. Uh, I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur. And we put these videos together every week to give you all the tips and insights from my experience over the last several years. So uh, make sure you tune in and subscribe. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in today. Um, I've got a a very special guest and a friend of many years. I guess we probably won't get into years because we were, oh. yeah, we were. We were kids. Yeah, we were kids back then. Like 20 years. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so we're gonna tell, it's been 20 years. Um, but uh, Jen has went out and been, I mean, when I knew she's a title rep here in, in Southern California, went on to head up several residential real estate firms. And actually, you know, maybe you could tell your bio better than I could. So why don't you go ahead? No, that's okay. No, I started off as a speaker, actually, yeah, right. so long time ago. Um, yeah, or no, several different hats in, in the real estate industry. Um, most recently, had you know, ran a lot of the real estate companies. So I've hired thousands of agents through the years, obviously, okay. um, in Southern California, um, and getting into real estate. I've built commercial real estate teams. Mm -hmm. I've built. I'm known in the industry for building uh, residential real estate teams. So I do a lot with the celebrity uh, teams that you'll see from Beverly Hills and across the country as well. So most recently I've got a uh, TV show coming out on CNBC called Listing Impossible. And that's with a gentleman by the name of Aaron Kerman. And we built his team up from about four agents to about 60, over 64 agents now and 15 employees. And we have our own building in Beverly Hills, um, a part of the Compass uh, banner in real estate. So um, just very used and very well known across the country speaking on teams and helping brokerages either create luxury certification classes or build their teams for brokerage. I feel like I've done nothing in those 20 years. <laughs> We've been friends now. <laughs> Wow. You've done a lot. Um, We've okay. always worked together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, now Aaron, uh, now is that, it's 64 agents under him or is yeah. that in that office? No. That's 64 under him. Right. We built him up. Right now we're probably the largest, we are the largest team in the United States of America, so we're very, very proud of that, that oh, big feature. So we went through a, a couple of different mergers and acquisitions. Started off as John Arrow, who you right, know John yeah. very well. Yeah. We love John. Uh, he sold with Pack Union, yeah. with Mark McLaughlin, and then uh, Mark sold over with Compass. So okay. now we're under the Compass banner. Or Aaron okay. Kerman is, yeah, and the team has just grown. So beautiful. And these shows, I mean, it's um, now it was Listing Impossible, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to start airing. Uh, hopefully, the end of July, beginning of August. So the bio is on CNBC currently, so you can kind of take a look at it. Uh, Aaron does have the billion dollar property, which is the most expensive property ever in residential in history. Um, a we've, billion dollar property. A billion dollar property, but we did a price reduction. It's now only about six hundred fifty. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, sell islands in development, yeah, so yeah. You know, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, it, it, you know, we're going to put a link to the show in the uh, at the bottom here, so uh, you'll be able to tune in and see it uh, next month. Um, I think we should, let's just kind of jump right in. You know, with everything we do with um, um, my website and YouTube channel, yep. we really are trying to help people, you know, obviously, as I was saying, you know, new investors getting into real estate. Um, commercial real estate or commercial real estate brokers or agents get into real estate and residential. So I thought it'd be great to have you come in today and talk about how um, as somebody that wants to be a real estate agent, I guess let's start off with residential, the steps they need to take to really get started. Um, you know, when I got into, it, it's funny because you started off with asking me how much does it take to get into the, res, how much money are you going to make your first year in residential real estate? Well, that's a big question it, I get asked it's, all the time. Everybody asks us that, right? Yeah. When they get in, they're like, I'm gonna, I just got my license. I love it when a new agent comes in and they say, well, I'm a broker now. Oh my, no, do not get your broker's license when you first get going. We do not even want brokers as the top real estate agents. Right. The top brokers do not, our top real estate agents do not on purpose get their broker's license. You have more liability and they just typically don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting. But I remember when I first started in real estate, uh, when I got my license, I think it was about 1997, 96 in, in Dallas right. with Abby Holiday. And I'll never forget when they interviewed me what they said. Right. They said, will you have enough money for one year to live off of if you're going to get in residential real estate? And if you cannot live for one year in this industry without a dime coming in, then don't get into real estate. 
You think that still that uh, still stands true? Thousand yeah. percent, that sounds so. true. And mm -hmm. you know what? It's it's look. You may get lucky. I've had I, I call them my kids that I coach. You may get lucky, and you may sell something, and you may make a hundred thousand dollars, like one of my kids did. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in it for maybe two three months. He's one of the cast members on the show, and got lucky with that. That's a rarity. If you're going to start in real estate, here's what you have to know. You have to know this is at least a six day a week job. If you think you're going to get into this and do right. four to five days, then don't get your license. I'm telling you right now, don't even do it. Not going to happen. There are so many different things that you have to do in today's, just the world that we live in with Zillow, right. with all these different real estate companies, and you're going against these people that have been emerged in this industry for years and years. Yep. So as we both know, Joe, most of the real estate is done by the top 5% in this industry. Yep. Used to be the 80-20 rule. No, not anymore. It's done by about 5% of the agents in the really high level. You know, and if you're getting into this business, structure is, I just think you have to, you have to have structure right from the get-go. Know where you're going to do, what time you're going to do it, everything, every day, and stick with it. I mean, obviously, you're going to get a listing appointment or showings that have come in and interrupt that, but then go right back to it. You know, you've got to have structure. It, it's, it can be, this industry can make you a lot of money, but if you don't run it like a business, oh, yeah. it will eat you alive. Oh, you'll, you'll you, be you'll, done. You're done because you, yeah. there, are, is, there is fierce competition. If you're going to come in at 10 and leave at 3, not going to happen. I, I do, yeah, I don't not going to happen. Yeah, I don't know residential. She no, does. No, so, not going to happen. Yeah, the competition <laughs> is, if you think, you know, in commercial I can speak to, your competition is showing up at 8.30 in the morning and leaving yeah. at 5, and they're doing their cold calls, their sphere of influence. All their networking and reaching out to everybody and you know the, you just have to you can't do that in residential come in at 8 30 leave at 5 absolutely no way your day is getting started at 5 because it and you do need to get in early in the morning because you have to start cold calling you have to have your power hour and just as you be started to say it is a hundred percent true unless you have systems and you're running this as a business then you're not going to survive if I had a dollar for every single agent said, I've been doing this for eight months, I do open houses every single Sunday, and I have not made one single dime yet. Right. If you're not willing to work 15 hour, 12 hour days and not make a dime, it is not rewarding at the beginning. Or the best part is when you're dealing with that buyer, as we both know, uh, and you're showing them around for months, and then all of a sudden they go and they sell, they buy with somebody else, and you lost that whole deal, and you've just spent months with these people away from your family. To everybody. Everybody, all of us. Yeah. So yeah. it's just a, a situation where you really have to have the systems up, your schedule up, to where you know exactly when you're going to do lead generation, when you're going to be studying for yourself, how you're going to be, um, how you're going to be getting everything together for your business and an education level as well to go to the next level. So what I hate what agents do as well is they go in and they'll practice on a listing presentation yeah. for somebody. No! Practice on your kids. Yeah. Your kids are the best to practice on. You know why? Because no. they're going to be brutally honest. <laughs> no, true. mom, no, dad, I would never buy a house from you. Yeah. So practice on a neighbor. Practice on somebody. Do not practice in front of a client. Yeah. Um, the worst part about it in, 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 in selling the real estate you have things that you're so close to closing on and how much do we know that escrow falls through right your closing doesn't your transaction doesn't go through there's nothing more heartbreaking and it happens to us all and unless you're really having somebody like a mentor or somebody look over your paperwork yeah he can't really do it in this day and age it's no. very very difficult sure so one thing i think is you know Agents need to really take a look at their pipeline. Do you get? Do you use that analogy? Absolutely. At all? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there needs to be something moving through, something yeah. coming out, something going in, and you know, it's again, it goes back to running it like it's a real business. And you know, I just, I'm going to beat that one to death. Is you've got to execute on everything, cold calling, door knocking, sphere of influence. You've got to do it all. A and, book of business. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, where do you? And this is something, especially on the residential side, I don't know, but where do, you, do most of the leads come in your first six, eight months? Sphere of influence? S such a great question. And, the, you know, I just had this two times this last week alone where I had agents and people that I'd known had their license for a while but weren't ready to make that full 100% commitment to becoming a residential real estate agent. So they were like dabbling like part time and they were saying, Jen, I'm ready to get going. I want to do it now. First question I asked before I would even put them on a team today. What is your pipeline? Do you have clients in your database right. right now? And if you don't have that, I can't even help you today. Right. So, you know, it's it's 
if you're, it depends on where you're at in the United States of America, obviously. Um, and that does change. So some tips, because I do teach this across the country for residential agents getting in the business. What networking events are you a part of? Are you a part of your chamber of commerce? Last week, I just spoke for Rheology in Vegas. And that was one of the things where one of the agents I had on a panel, I chose her because she had reinvented herself, Joe, three times mm -hmm. as she had moved around, gotten a divorce, yep. moved out of the state. She was originally in Idaho, moved to Seattle, then moved back to Boise. <laughs> Um, to another started whole city. over every time. It started over every time, and she just did this. And so I asked her, I was fascinated by that. I said, How did you do that in this day and age? And she said, I got in and I went to the Chamber of Commerce and I said, Send everybody to me, and I am selling Boise. That is what I do. And she just had that in her mindset, in her mind, and that's what she does. Yeah. She takes people around and drives them around. So, where are you going to get your leads from? There's got to be some sort of source. One of the biggest things that I always talk about on stage, Joe, is if you right now and you're thinking, my God, I don't think I have a book of business. I don't have that pipeline. Where do I start from? Unfortunately, here's where you're going to start from. Yeah. Take your five friends that you hang out with the most. Write down on a piece of paper what you think that their average income is. Obviously, you're not going to ask them. Just write what you think it is. Divide it by five, and it's probably what you make. So... Mm. If you're hanging out with your old drinking high school buddy yeah. and you're trying to get into that luxury market or break into that right. subdivision you really want into, you're probably not going to do that with hanging out with the same people that right. you've been hanging out with for the past 10 years. Yeah. I know that sounds brutal, yeah. but it's the truth. Another thing that it's all about mindset. Everything is about mindset. If your sister that you call, it's like, how dare you get into real estate 100% commission? Are you out of your mind to do 100% commission job? Don't call your sister for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Hang up. Don't go there for advice. Don't, but go to a Starbucks. Sit down. Tell the barista that you are the local real estate agent. But here's the most important tip. Even if you do have a pipeline, Joe, you mm -hmm. have got to know your market. If you are seeing under 25 homes a week under that, you're not in real estate. Right. So if you're just getting out and you don't even know the inventory and yeah. you think you're gonna sit in an open house this weekend and you haven't even sat and looked at what else is sitting a street away from you on an open house, yeah. don't sit the open house because you don't know your inventory. Right. So once you have inventory, what does that give you? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Once you have confidence, is it easier to make that cold call or that warm call to your sure. aunt that may have a listing? Yep. You have something to talk about. You have inventory to show. One of the best, best tips that I deal with, um, I've worked with Josh Altman and, and the Altman family for, for years. I love him to death. Um, one thing Josh always says, always have a property to show. Always yep. have something to show. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not doing research and development properly in the mornings, whenever that is, or late at night. Yeah, whenever you can. Know the inventory. I think you're going to uh, automatically see how your pipeline starts to open up. Yeah. Those conversations become different. Yeah. Because when you go to a party, what do people always want to talk about at the party? Real estate. Oh, yeah. The common development. You know, there's a, yeah. you, you made me think of it. I was just in Dallas last week, and I talked to an agent. And as, you know, there's kind of an influx of Californians mm -hmm. moving to, to Dallas. Sure. And what she has done, she sees the companies that are com that are, are moving to Dallas. She gets on LinkedIn and oh, starts contacting, brilliant. starts contacting brilliant. all these people. You need a home, you know. You, and she's made a fortune. Well, you know why? LinkedIn, the average income of the person that's on LinkedIn is about three hundred thousand dollars. Right. So it's not Facebook, okay? Right. Yeah. It's not Snapchat, and it's not IG. Right. So there, that's why you're going to get more bang for your buck on LinkedIn if you're trying to get a higher caliber person. If you're a vice president of a company, you're not going to be on these other social media things, but I guarantee you'll be on LinkedIn. Yeah. So it is brilliant. It's a must. It's a must. Another thing that a, a friend of mine does, he called me up one day. He goes, Joe, I've got this commercial lease. He goes, and it's, it's for um, doctors. He goes, mm -hmm. um, I, he goes, I'm going to call you back in five days. He goes, I need three names out of your list that I can reach out to. Wow. And I knew him. I said, <laughs> I, he'll call back, guarantee you. And so I gave him, I just said, just hold on, let me give you three names right now that you can contact. Awesome. And he leased it out. I mean, it's just, LinkedIn's a powerful tool. It is a very powerful tool. You know how to use it. But it's also, you know, go back and call like resources like what your friend called you. Yep. He knew that he could get three numbers out of you. Yeah. So even when you're calling people for your warm calling, where do most of our leads in residential Sphere come from? Sphere of influence. Sphere, people you know. Your family and friends. Yep. That's your first transaction typically in a residential real estate yep. field is friends and family. Yep. Um, let's, um, you know, one thing, uh, tell me the, the biggest pitfalls. Tell me the downside of 
selling real estate? Time. Losing the time in the day. Oh, yeah. Because you're working 24-7 and it's a thankless job um, most of the time. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. When you sell a $600 million home, it's not a bad Hey, day. listen, yeah. you know, I mean, one, of the, one of the homes that I'm selling on my show, it's the Laguna property that you'll see highlighted. Uh, Bruce Faber is, is the seller on that and, oh, yeah. and uh, I, we sold his house. Did you? And it was the, the experience of that working with somebody so tremendous like that mm -hmm. was such a, a, a gift. Yeah. But it's such a rarity. That's yeah. why it was like I was almost in tears half the time because we don't have sellers like this. It is a beating on half the things that you do. If you knew what the sellers expect out of us to do a listing, um, and then when you spend all your money on trying to market their home and then it doesn't sell and they go with your competitor, mm -hmm. that's the, the downfall of this industry. That's a really hard pill to swallow. Um, you, your neighborhood, you're right there and you try to get the listing a couple of doors down from you and with somebody else just got the listing. Yeah. and you to drive That's by hard. every single day. Um, how about when we I, sold homes oh, oh, yeah. so, and then you drive by? That's not my sign. That's yeah. my client, but not my yeah, sign. That's tough. That's a tough one. Um, something that you're exceptional at building a team. Why don't you walk us through the process you go through to find the right people to bring into your team? So that this is my sweet spot on building teams. Um, we all have gifts in this world. That mm -hmm. happens to be mine to know who's going to have synergy and who's going to work with who. So um, thank goodness um, I've, I've been very successful at doing that. So how do I do that? That is a lot of personality tests that I do. Okay. Dr. Abelson that's down in Austin, Texas, actually, mm -hmm. he's one of um, mine and my business partner's um, uh, partners. And so I do a DISC personality test. It's not that it's just always so accurate on that and you're going to tell everything, but it tells me the character of the person that I'm going to deal with and if they're going to have synergy on that team. Okay. So like if you take, I, I've mentioned, you know, Aaron Kerman, I've mentioned Josh Altman in this. Um, I had an agent that was, I mean, a hustler. He had clients, but he didn't have the experience in real estate. Mm. Immediately, I'm going to get him with Josh Altman. Yeah. Because Josh, he answers that phone 24-7, boy. Yeah. I mean, I sit there with him, and I see an unknown phone number come up. Josh is going to answer that call. Now, I would like to see any other agent that could say the same thing. They don't. No. Trust me. No. So, it yeah, it's 24-7 that these guys work like that. So, and when you're building the team, don't expect as a new agent, this is what I hate in this industry too. I could put a go-getter new agent on a team. They take it for granted because that team, you may say you're the team leader, has yep. been feeding them leads. Yep. They're like, oh, I can do this on my own. I can go off and do whatever. <laughs> oh, good luck, baby. Yeah. Because let's really see where those leads come in from. Yeah, that, that's a problem. It's, you know, they think it's, it, it's... Once those leads you keep giving to you, and they've made a little bit of money probably from those leads. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're going to go out and do it on your own and not do everything that Jenna's telling you here today, it, it's going to not be a tough road to hoe. It just doesn't happen today. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I sit in front of agents all over the United States of America on a daily basis, right. and I've been doing it for over 20 years at a high level, traveling worldwide yeah. speaking about real estate, quite frankly. I, you know, I'm, yeah. known, I'm a known international real estate speaker. Right. So it's, it, yeah, unless you really have that pipeline and you know how the systems in that book have, of business. You need to have several deals in the works before right. you can go do it on your own. How do you, how do you find the people? That's something. I mean, you know, they find crabs. us. Okay. They yeah, find they they find us. There's, you know, it depends on what capacity that I w was working on the high high end luxury. You know, that I've been doing for so many years now. Uh, we have phone calls left and right, and okay. I mean, very wealthy people, attorneys. You know, that are coming in from the entertainment industry. Right. People that say, hey, my aunt's got a thirteen million dollar, you know, listing. Can you take it? You know, those are the kind of caliber. But even right. those people, sometimes I'm not going to hire. If you're not hungry, I don't care what level you're working yeah. at. I don't care if you're selling $80,000 condos. I don't care. I need you hungry. Yeah. I need you to want to be able to work. And if you have that drive in you to work, then you can do it in this industry. But you have to eat, sleep, and breathe business. this business. And you have to want to go see open houses. You don't look at this as a chore. You have to want to go to broker's preview. You have to be able to get along with all your fellow colleagues in this industry because 25 percent of your business is other real estate agents like mm -hmm. brokers like you sure, and i yeah. those are our clients as well so you have to really put the ego aside yeah and unless you're yeah. able to put the ego aside and let's say you made you know half a million dollars as the ceo of the of the company last year and now you want to get into real estate i come across it all the time I'm true leave the ego out the door 
Yeah, and that's something that you see across. I mean, once people start making money, sometimes it changes them. Don't let that happen to you. Yeah. People want to work with good people. That's right. Uh, you know, bring your A game, um, but you don't need to be mean and nasty. No, but you know, the most thing that people really want to work with you on, honestly, mm -hmm. is what is the connection they have with you. Yep. And like when I tell people to go out, whether on commercial listings with yep. people, be chill. Yeah. Like I, I love like you'll see like how Aaron Kerman is like uh, right. on the show and everything. He's just relaxed. Yeah. T-shirts, sneakers, whatever. Yeah. He's just himself. And I loved one time one of these huge developers asked him. It's not on the show. He said, "Well, what do you think the home is worth?" And he looked at him and goes, "I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball." But here's kind of what I think. So yeah. don't be that know-it-all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be informed, but be informed. don't need, yeah. But don't you don't need to to be putting information you're really not sure right. about. And you know it's. You know, you got to always keep in mind, people talk to people they know, people yeah. do business with people they trust. Right. And so you got to build that trust and let people get to know you. And on your marketing side of it, you know, make sure you're putting, bring value to the table on your marketing. If you're going to be putting content out on Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. and LinkedIn, make sure you're bringing value. I mean, is that something that you guys really have a focus on? Are you guys absolutely. pushing so yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, nobody wants to see you baking cookies at one o'clock in the afternoon on a right. Tuesday. Right. Um, but they also do not want to sit there and see over and over your listings that you have on, on just properties. Yeah. I need That's... more of a pulse from you. If you come from the military, my goodness, post about that yeah post where does the commonality that you can have that's going to be your niche to build your book of business with if you're a dog lover okay fine yeah. you know I have a stupid little black Pomeranian Bibiana Berman she's you know I take her everywhere there is a there is a Pomeranian uh, on Balboa Island in Orange County we yeah, have yeah. to go to it it's a little parade you know so those are like yeah. the little common things that believe it or not if people just find that one commonality it's like going on a listing presentation don't just come in the house and start talking and well, let's sit at the kitchen table let's yeah. go to the comps Good don't to know do, yeah mm -hmm. people love their house did you upgrade that who chose that backsplash oh you guys have a beagle we had a beagle growing up right you know just find something the commonality they, yeah. that's it they yeah. want to trust you and know you yeah it's not just all about business nope and it's you know on your social maybe you're, you do more documenting than creating maybe you don't need to create a lot of content maybe just document your life showing the home showing you walk in your home and showing your life. Yeah. And, um, you Get know, to that, know you. Yeah, exactly. The real you. Not not a lot of this other stuff that right. gets put out there. But Don't be doing these selfies and all that <laughs> kind of, you know, risque stuff. And right. if you're out, you know, cocktailing out in Vegas, leave yeah. that off. Yeah. Keep it professional. When people post things on my page, I don't, I'll take some things off sometimes sure. if it's too silly or if it's political. D yeah. Don't do those things. It's, it's good Stay to show away. you can have a sense of humor and have fun, but not... Still keep it professional. Certain, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, I feel like we've covered a lot. Um, what did we miss? Anything? I think, you know, uh, the question that I get a lot, yeah, there is something. I get a lot that I get a residential real estate agent and then they get a commercial deal that they want to do. Okay. Oh my gosh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, I had to make, it is like a dog and a cat doing residential real estate mm -hmm. and doing commercial real estate. These are not the same thing, guys. Right. And so that's one reason why Joe and I, we've worked together, and George, we've worked together for so many years, because even though I have managed with the highest agents in the United States of America, they know where their limits are and their boundaries, sure. where they're not gonna get into some of these commercial deals as heavily, and that's yeah. why we've referred it to you, and that's why yeah. we've worked with you guys so much. And that's why past. we don't do residential. We don't know anything about residential. It, we always stick to your path, do what you know, and if you start trying to do residential, commercial, I mean, we had a, we stepped in on a lawsuit, a residential agent did a deal in Beverly Hills and didn't put in about the cam fees, oh. and you know, that was a big deal, and yeah. so that agent and their company got sued, we stepped in, cleaned it up, um, and you know, it's just do what you know, that's key. But, commercial leases. That's yeah, what everybody yeah. doesn't understand. You know, that's one of the biggest lawsuits in commercial real estate, too, is commercial leases yeah. that we find. They're very hard because you're working with attorneys on them, too. So. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's you really need to stay in your lane and dominate what you're trying to know. Yeah. And as a new agent or you're trying to invest, know what you're investing in. Yeah. Know what niche market that you want to go into and dominate that first right. before you start becoming, you know, a jack of all trades but a master of none. Yeah. And just never stop learning in this business. There's yeah. things change every day. So yes. be aware of it. But uh, Jim, thank you so much. 
Thank you. It's a pleasure. Always a and pleasure with Joe. I'm going to put uh, Jen's uh, uh, the what's it called mission mission impossible listing, listing impossible. impossible CNBC. Yeah, CNBC. We'll put the link to the show so you can go check it out before it comes out. And if you want to get hold of Jen, I'm going to put my contact information up there, and I'll reach out to her on your behalf. So, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.